Hey everybody, Matt Maynard here with another helpful relationship video. This one's for boundaries with parents that they can set with their kids so that they can get along better and have a healthier family dynamic, create that hierarchy again that every family needs. So in order to have boundaries, one th the first thing I wanna talk about is, is emotional reactivity. The emotional reactivity of your child should stay with your child. Obviously, we all lose our patience with our kids. We're all going to be at times really flustered and overwhelmed, especially in public, uh, maybe a little embarrassed, but that's totally normal. I'm not looking for you to be perfect. All I'm trying to help you do is start to separate your child's emotions, their feelings from yours, because ultimately, if you don't actually start to separate their emotional reactivity from your emotions, you're going to start to get enmeshed and you're gonna have a hard time undoing that entanglement and that enmeshment because then your child is going to have a false sense of control or influence over you, which is ultimately then going to lead to them being more focused on controlling you rather than controlling themselves, if that makes sense. So I wanna make sure I start off with the video with talking about that. So the, the best way that you can start to draw healthy emotional boundaries is through highlighting your child making their own choice. They're choosing to react and respond that way. They're choosing to not put their shoes on. They're choosing to leave their room a mess. They're choosing to not be proactive with their schoolwork. So I want you to be able to start highlighting that your child is making a decision. They're not going to be able to then um, deviate from that and blame other people like they more often than not do, right? It's always your fault. Um, so that's the first part. The second one is, is, and this is very hard because this goes back to emotional reactivity. I want you to start to have a tone of indifference towards the choices that your children make because they need failure. And a lot of parents, because they're stuck in compliance, right? They want their kid to not have to go through these painful experiences. And if they just listen to us, the adults and the people that have had more life experience, their life would be infinitely easier. Here's the hard part though. That's the only reason that you value your decision making is because more often than not, when you made poor decisions, you faced poor consequences, all right? So I want you to start to have more of a tone of indifference towards the choices that your children are making because ultimately, that's another part of that emotional reactivity. If you're becoming emotionally reactive to their decisions, then ultimately, their decisions are affecting you. Obviously, safety concerns and anything that's of danger, you are going to want to not have a tone of indifference. They're running across the parking lot or you find drugs in the house, yeah you're not gonna have a tone of indifference. Those are concerns, right? So obviously this is, there are outliers. So I'm not saying it's a hard and fast rule, but more often than not. Consequences when you have leverage, also another important piece. You're not going to implement or start threatening consequences. That is a power move. That's all about compliance. That's also you being emotionally reactive. And we all know in those moments when you start throwing out consequences as the kid's melting down because you're trying to get them to stop, Ultimately, we all know half the time you don't fall through. And that's okay, I get it, we are all, we've all been there. But ultimately, if your consequences are gonna have actual impact, you have to wait until you have leverage. So you can actually wait and delay consequences because really, in the way that I teach consequences and I talk to parents is, is you're actually using consequences to get your child to reflect and strategize how they're going to change their behavior when they start to have certain emotional experiences that led to poor behavior that you're using consequences for. Okay, so that's a very important piece to this, that you're using consequences when you have leverage, and then when you're using those consequences, you're not using them to be punitive and punishing. Punishment leads to rebellion, and also punishment is personal, right? You wanna punish the child because they've done this to you. You've embarrassed me, or, or, or um, you know not to act that way in, in the grocery store, or you know that you can't always get you know, sugary cereal or whatever the problem is, right? So ultimately, you don't want to use consequences to be punitive. You want to get your child to start to take ownership for their decisions and their choices by coming up with a reflective strategy so they don't fall into this trap for themselves again. Not do this to you, they're doing this to themselves. Last but not least, the most important one, and I see this a lot, uh, there were a lot of parenting books that came out way back, not in the, in the recent uh, uh, history here, that had kids sleeping in their parents' beds all the time and using their bathroom. The amount of parents that I have that are doing this that have problems is substantial. And I've never really, in a lot of ways, seen that work out in the long term because eventually there's no differentiation. There's no clear physical boundaries sometimes with the kids and the parents. And ultimately, 
Uh, that leads to the kid believing that they are either an equal or that you're there to kind of always meet their needs, which is also enmeshment. So listen, I hope this video is helpful. And if you know anybody that could really benefit from hearing this, by all means, share it and pass it along. Uh, you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel at Matthew Maynard LMFT. And I hope this was helpful.